Sean runs the Ealing Wildlife Group and has brought lots of house spiders round to mine in plastic pots. Yeah, thanks, Sean. He's looking for the female. They've been living in your house all year. We're just seeing more. So I'm here with the man himself, Chris Packham, and he has a few words to say about volunteering with Ealing Wildlife Group and other local conservation. Yeah, but before we get started, I'll... Arriving into London, I went to meet with exotic pet veterinarian, Dr. Sean McCormack, in the hope he'd be able to answer one crucial question. Why are snakes from Africa still being traded around the world? So in ball pythons in particular, we've seen a massive boom in people keeping them and tinkering with their genetics and breeding them for the latest color morph or the latest rare pattern or breeding different types together to, to produce an even more rare form. I think a lot of that is driven not by fascination or respect for the animals, but it's driven by ego and um, potentially fame. A lot of the genetics that give rise to the kind of latest colour morphs, the weird patterns, the wonderful new kind of um, dazzling array of, of, of types is due to trade in wild ball pythons in Africa. I often get asked, what are the kind of funny stories that happen in vet practice? And believe me, there are many, some of which I cannot repeat on this video. But one thing that has happened to almost every vet I know is the case of a client running in, really panicked, having found strange lumps on their male dog's belly. And I look at them and I examine them and I say to her, they're your dog's nipples. And her response is, but he's a boy. Why does he have nipples? It's people feeding the Indian ringneck parakeets. Uh, hand tame, but actually wild birds. Kind of a... You hear that one back there? Yeah. You'll get your ear in. It's really difficult. A lot of you probably, or maybe I just... So these leeches, they've got a little sucker at the back, which they attach by. And then at their head is their little biting mouth parts and eyes, apparently. Uh, I can't see his eyes, but, or her eyes, could be a girl. I want to answer a question I get asked a lot about an old wives tale when it comes to dogs noses. Does a wet nose mean a healthy dog? And the answer is no, not really, because every dog's individual and some dogs noses will be drier than others. But there is a reason why generally dogs will have a moist nose. They produce mucus inside the nose and they sometimes lick their nose and cover it with saliva because scent molecules travel best in a moist environment. So dogs see the world in smelly vision. And an interesting fact about a dog's sense of smell versus a human's is that dogs have over 400 million scent receptors inside their nose, whereas we only have about five to six million. I am here in the middle of the London National Park City Festival week with Ealing Wildlife Group. We are running a series of events in the borough called Wild Discovery Days where we are looking to engage local people with the amazing green spaces around them and show them the wildlife and the nature and the biodiversity it can So, take. so excited. I came here two months ago to look in this tree to see if we had any hobbies visiting. It was probably a little bit early and actually the nest that they nested in last year was occupied by a crow back then. We've been rewarded with a pair of hobbies mobbing a red kite. Dog napping is also on the rise right here in the UK. Would you believe a 170% increase in dog thefts since lockdown began? Well, I'm joined now by vet Sean McCormick. And Sean, you know, I know we've talked about this before because it's a terrible worry for, for dog owners right now. It's scary, isn't it? It's massively scary to think that, you know, your furry family member could be taken from you and you never see them again. Um, and, you know, I think the cases have almost doubled since lockdown began. It's frightening and I think they're still on the rise. So we need to be really, really vigilant as dog owners. That this Padstow is here is going to make a wonderful journey. Take a look at the aerial shots we shot yesterday. It's going to leave here, make a thousand mile journey up the coast of Scotland, doing some really important work to really map our oceans and find out what's happening in the seas off our coast. 
Uh, Sean McCormack's one of the vets on board. Morning, Sean. Gives Morning. a sense of the kind of work you're going to be doing then. Yeah, so we're going on this really important journey called My Changing Planet, really to highlight the importance of our ocean health and climate change. It's not something that's talked about enough, we think. And believe it or not, the ocean is producing half of our oxygen we breathe, it's sinking carbon, it's regulating our Earth's temperature, and really importantly, it's host to so much wildlife and biodiversity that we're going to explore on this trip. But it's not on the main agenda at COP26, which kind of boggles the mind. So we're hoping to bring what we find on the journey to COP26, get our global leaders talking about it, and we're hoping that the viewers will follow us on My Changing Planet on social media and our website. The last known records of the harvest mouse are 1979. So we think they've been gone for at least 30 or 40 years because of the way we manage our landscapes. So now we're managing them a bit more sympathetically for nature and allowing them to rewild over the next few years. We decided it was high time to bring harvest mice back to Ealing. Badgers will be very clean and they will move out old bedding and move in new bedding into their set. And the other clue, which says to me there has been very recently a badger in residence here, is that I found badger hairs. The good news is that spider season will be over soon. <laughs> He's back in the box.